this is part three and the last part of this uh, rant series on forgiveness. Now I'm going to talk specifically on the counseling side. And I'm, we're going to go slow because I want to make sure you guys really get this. If you're counseling people who have either uh, been uh, offended and most of the time there is a sense of betrayal because, you know, a simple offense is easy. Betrayals are the more difficult ones to uh, handle, especially in church. So if you guys are handling a counseling session and you're counseling the offended and the offender, there are certain things you got to remember. Uh, first thing I would say is this. If you're counseling, first and foremost, the offended party, okay? The, per the party who was sinned against. Um, I would caution you to be very patient with them. Uh, don't pressure them to forgive, especially when you don't know the whole story, especially when you haven't heard both sides, especially if you don't know the details. Um, you got to understand the gravity of the offense and why the offense was so painful for the offended party or the person sinned against. Um, for example, let me just give an example. Don't, like, let's say someone borrowed 100,000 pesos, right? 100,000 pesos. And this guy um, lent the money knowing full well that he also was in dire need, but he trusted the person and the person said, I'm going to pay you back next month. Um... And, you know, the guy said, okay, I trust you. You're going to pay me back next month. But you do know I'm going to need this money to buy medicine for my, my father or my mother. And the offended party did it in trust. Uh, what happens is the offender, let's just say, did not pay him back in time. And let's say he instead even used the money to hang out with some friends and to party up and to, you know. So not only was there a delay in the payment, there was a waste of the money when it could have been repaid at least partly, but instead it was wasted, right? So you, you go from unintentional sin to actually betraying the trust of someone. Now, what if instead of just a party, the person, the offender, the sinner, actually did this in a manipulative way because he wanted to maybe make the other person go through a lot of pain with his own father you know for some whatever reason like some really wicked malicious you know evil reason let, let, let's just say so there are three different kinds of gravities here um, we cannot just command the person just forgive right now you know um, even if there is an act of a kind of restitution we we have to you gotta remember this the offended party the one sinned against has the right to decide when he believes that the other person is truly repentant, okay? I'll say it again. I'll say it in a different way. So I'll say it again. The offended party, the person sinned against, has the right to decide when he or she believes that the sinner is genuinely repentant. They have the right. And so they can dictate, in a sense, I'm not saying they should lord it over, okay? But in a sense, they should be allowed to dictate how much quote-unquote effort or restitution is, is enough. So in the first example, let's say the, the amount borrowed was 100000 The person then goes, I already gave you back 1000 and I'll pay the 99000 later on, but you got to forgive me now. The, the sinner has no right to demand and say, I paid you 1000 pesos. I gave you 1%, so you got to forgive me. You know... If the pain was really big, if let's say the person lost his dad or his mom or the person who needing medical, you know, medical attention because of the money that wasn't there, blah, blah, blah. You know, a thousand pesos is not going to buy back your, your loved one, especially if the loved one was not saved, you know, was not a Christian, things like that. So, you, or, you know, seeing the stress and, you know, the person just going through the stress and looking at Facebook and you just went to party in Boracay when you could have paid me back. That really hurt me so much more. So, the uh, we got to balance this, okay? Let, let's look at the balance. On one hand, you got to tell the person, bro, you have to be ready to forgive. You have to find it in your heart. You got to go to the cross. You got to pray about this. You got to ask God to give you the grace to be willing to forgive, to be ready to forgive. But at the same time, you cannot pressure the person and say, he already paid you 1000 I know, I know it's just 1%, but you got to forgive already. That's enough to prove restitution. You can't dictate that for the person. The person ha that's between them and God, right? So 
you have to allow the person some sympathy and some patience because again you know the bible actually says this in proverbs i don't remember where in proverbs but uh it says something like an offended brother is more is more it's like a fortified city or uh, offended brother or brother who is wronged is more unyielding than a, a fortified city or a fortress or something like that right so a person who is offended and the word there is brother which means this is this is probably like a, a christian and another christian like you know two believers and one got betrayed, you know. So there's a sense of betrayal there because you're expecting the fellow Christian to behave in a Christian way. Just the fact that they profess Christ, you already have certain expectations. When they break those expectations, that's a spiritual thing as well. And so um, there's a deeper pain there. So you have to give more patience to um, the person who got offended. They need to be given more sympathy than the sin, the, the sinner or the sinning party. Now, when you're ministering to the sinner, the person who did the offense, you got to remember a few things. You have to remind them of all these factors that I just mentioned earlier, but at the same time, you have to tell them that they need to make sure that they've really done everything they can to make restitution. So, if the person said, I already paid him back a thousand pesos, what, he wants the whole hundred thousand? Like, Bro, you can't be mad if the person cannot trust you yet because you're the one who broke trust. So you really got to earn it back. And it depends. Sometimes it's going to take a long time. And this just might be the consequence of your sin. And so you have to kind of counsel the person and say, dude, or bro, or sis, you were the one who sinned. It was your fault. You can't be mad and demanding. And you can't say, you should forgive me now. You should do this now. It cannot be on your timetable because, again, you're the debtor here. You're asking for grace. You're asking for mercy. You can't go, well, Jesus demands that you forgive me. Therefore, you should forgive me now. Ha! You can't do that because then you're actually trying to be the one lording it over someone else. You're behaving like an entitled, spoiled brat. And that's not how the gospel works. You know, you can't use gospel truths to abuse someone who you've already abused in the past, right? So you have to uh, remind these people that, you know, one of the possible or potential consequences of your sin is you lose the friendship forever. If you can truly say with all of your heart, you've done everything you could to make restitution. So you borrowed 100,000, you've already paid back 80,000 and you wrote post-dated checks for the next 20K. And you've, you've said sorry a thousand times, you know, and they still can't forgive you? Well, that's between them and God, but at least your conscience is okay with the Lord. So you just have to move forward and say, Lord, this may have been the consequence of my sin, you know? Maybe a hundred thousand meant so much more to the person than I expected, or I, I don't know. But I've done everything I could. My conscience is clear. I'm going to move on with my life and trust you and follow you. So, one potential consequence is you lose the relationship. You lose the friendship forever. Or maybe it's going to take a few months, maybe even years. But you have to, you cannot be angry and take it against the other person because in the first place, you're the debtor here. Right, so those are things that you got to um, take a look at when you're counseling either side, either party. Because as a counselor, you got to know, um, you got to try to realize what the gospel is and how those gospel principles and truths are applied. So just as we don't say to God, God, I demand your forgiveness because you said you're forgiving. And you said, if you said if we confess our sins, you will wash us as white as snow. I'm confessing right now, so wash me. Like that's, no, that you're, you're being unrepentant and demanding of the Lord. And again, God cannot be mocked. So we have to keep those truths in mind. I, I hope that as counselors, we remember these things and we... We remind these things to the people who need to hear them most. God bless you guys. This is the end of the rant series on forgiveness.